This is Dr. James Wilcox from the Department of Family Medicine, and today we'll discuss basic hip ultrasound. We'll start with the anterior hip, looking at the hip joint, femoral vasculature, and the iliopsoas tendon and bursa, and the lateral hip, looking at the bursa and the gluteal tendons. Then we'll transition to the posterior hip, looking at the SI joint, piriformis, sciatic nerve, ischial tuberosity, and the hamstring tendons. So always make sure you make your marker dot point towards the patient's head or right or whatever structure that you are looking at. We'll start with the anterior hip. And as you'll note, the ultrasound is placed in kind of a oblique fashion to get the femoral head and neck. And we are looking at the anterior joint line. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. We're looking for any effusion in that anterior recess. Next, we will follow the femur down distally, adjusting the depth as we need to. And we'll turn in transverse to the femur, and we can check for any signs of cortical irregularities or fractures or breaks on the femur. As always, make sure to turn the probe in two axes, longitudinal and short axis, when looking for fractures. As we come back to the hip joint, you can see the femoral artery and vein. So we compress the vein here. And we'll see the iliopsoas muscle and tendon here as well. Can rotate the probe, and you'll see the iliopsoas tendon as it goes over and across the hip joint. Next, we'll palpate the lateral hip, find the greater trochanter, and place our probe right on the greater trochanter in a transverse plane. And what we're looking for is a rooftop appearance the greater trochanter. That's where a bursitis might live. It's actually very uncommon to find bursitis. More often we'll see a pathology with the tendons themselves. So we'll rotate the posterior aspect of that greater trochanter, and this is going to be the gluteus medius tendon as it inserts on the greater trochanter. And we'll go back to our home base of the rooftop and look at the anterior aspect of that greater trochanter. And this is going to be the gluteus minimus muscle and tendon right here. Next, we'll look at the posterior hip, starting at the posterior superior iliac spine and traveling down. You can see the sacrum and the sacrum foramen. As the ischium starts to drop away, we'll see underneath the gluteus maximus, the piriformis starting to take shape. A little more depth here. You can see the piriformis and the sciatic nerve beneath that. As we drop down, there's a, again a picture of the gluteus maximus and piriformis. As we internally rotate the hip, you can see the piriformis moving. So we'll glide down a little more posteriorly, more, more caudally. Um, you can see the quadrius femoris and the obturatus internus here. And this is a common site for posterior hip impingement. And we'll look at the ischial tuberosity, which where the hamstring tendons are. You can also look at this from below. We can find the ischial tuberosity again and the hamstring origin. You can evaluate that in long axis for any signs of hamstring tearing or disruption. And we can rotate 90 degrees and evaluate those tendons again in two axis. This would be in short axis, looking for any tears or disruptions of the hamstring tendons.
Thank you for watching.